What's up guys, today I'm showing you my go-to art supplies. So these are supplies that I always have in my pencil case and I'm always using in my sketchbook. And I will admit these supplies change over time, but right now um, these are my favorites and I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about each one. So let's get started. All right, first and foremost, I wanna start with the Tombow brush pens because honestly, I feel like these are some of the most slept on art supplies and I'll tell you why. So when I started drawing and I was getting into markers, I never wanted water-based markers, right? Everybody wants that nice blending and so people gravitate towards Copics or towards Prismacolors and stuff like that. So you're not gonna get the blending of an alcohol-based marker, but they have a great um, brush nib, which it's like kind of firm, but you can do a lot with it. You can get a lot of line variation. Um, and just some really interesting quick marks. The brand also has a great selection of colors and saturation, so the markers really lay down a good amount of uh, pigment. And one advantage to them actually being water-based markers is that they're not gonna bleed into the next page like a Copic or a Prismacolor would. Uh, so they're great for sketching, doodling in your sketchbook. I just love them. Since we're talking about markers, I want to talk about chart pack markers. They do have a chisel nib, which when I started drawing was never what I wanted. So if you are somebody that really relies on that brush nib um, that a Copic marker would have, I wouldn't really recommend these for you. However, I love the pigmentation of these. Um, and I actually really love the chisel nib. I actually find that I can get some really interesting marks with them, um, some really thin lines and also really thick lines. And it helps me make drawings really quickly in my sketchbook. Uh, because of the size of the nib, I can really play around with it and it has a really great color flow. So I can move really quickly and the marker won't dry up, which I really like. Okay, so next on my list is this Ecoline brush pen. I would put this kind of in the same character as the Tombows. It's just a little bit different. The key difference is really just the formula of the ink. So I have only used it in this kind of burnt sienna color, um, but I would definitely buy more of them because I really have loved working with it. It has a really great brush nib, which is great for different line varieties. And I usually use it in conjunction with my Tombow brush markers um, because it's a great shadow color because unlike the Tombows, you can really build up um, a variety of values when you're using this. So every time you lay this down on top of itself, it gets a little bit darker. Um, there is a point where you will start to kind of tear the paper, so you don't want to reach that too quickly um, or push it. But if you're careful, you can get a lot of easy, like full value drawings in your sketchbook with just this one pen, which is really cool. All right, next up is the Pentel Sign Pen, and I have gone through five of these. This is my favorite inking pen of all time. The nib is so flexible, but also really firm. So you can get really nice thin lines and then really thick kind of juicy lines too. And you can get so much line variety really easily. Um, it's really expressive, the marks that this makes uh, and the flow of the ink is really nice and it's dark black. And I'm pretty sure it's archival, don't quote me on that, but um, I've had a lot of great uses with them. Um, I really think I've gone through at least four. I might be on my fifth, that's how much I love these. Okay, next up are microns, so I feel like maybe this was a little bit expected because these are pretty famous, but um, I usually always have a black, a blue, and a red on me. Uh, my blue died, my red is getting there. Um, these are also a pen that I go through like crazy. I prefer them in the 03 size. I feel like that kind of gives me the most um, wiggle room between getting thin lines and thicker lines, um, so that's my go-to size for that. Yeah, these are a great option. The ink flow is really great, and they're also archival, which is good. Um, that's what people say. I don't actually, like, it lasts a long time, I guess. You know, it's fancy. Uh, <laughs> all right, this one is not a surprise. I've been using Prismacolor colored pencils since the beginning. I think I've had a set probably since sixth grade, and then I bought all of them, what was a gift, um, in eighth grade. So I've had all of them for, like, four years now, and I use them literally almost every single time I'm drawing. I think a lot of people want to know what's like the best colored pencil and honestly when you get down to it all the formulas are a little bit different so there's not really a best one out of all of them it's really just what are you looking for so I've heard a lot that the argument is between Prismacolors or um, Fabricastel Polychromos which I have also used for me I actually like the Prismacolors better just because I find that they're a little bit softer um, and I can actually get a little bit more line variety out of them when I'm drawing versus the polychromas, which I find to be a little bit harder, uh, the lead. So it's a little bit tougher to kind of like push them into the paper. At least that's what I find. Um, however, there are advantages to that where you can get really sharp lines. So I kind of use them both, but personal colors are always my go-to. I have a couple favorite colors uh, that I always have in my pencil case and I love sketching with them. So they're a great option. All right, the next thing I would definitely recommend to any artist are woodless graphite pencils. I started using these a couple years ago and they literally changed the game. 
Um, basically, it's just completely graphite and there's no wood holding the lead in. And basically that means one thing, more line variety. So I know I've mentioned that a couple times in this video, um, but it's really important to me when I'm drawing that I can really manipulate the pencil a lot and get a lot of different marks and strokes with one pencil without having to constantly switch it out, right? So I love these because I can do that so easily. Um, so I've used a couple different brands. I don't think it really matters. Um, I would just recommend buying woodless graphite pencils. I always, always, always recommend them over wood graphite pencils. Um, I think they're a lot of fun. However, if you have a hard hand, they will snap on you, especially the softer ones. So get a lot. <laughs> um, here's like one example I had to kind of tape it back together because I'll, I'll literally draw and it'll snap right off as I'm working. Um, so if you don't like that, um, these might not be for you, but I love these. They're some of my favorite art supplies. And as much as I love the woodless graphite pencils, when I'm looking for some sharper details or I'm sketching faces really small in my sketchbook, something like that, most often I'll just use a mechanical pencil. Um, so forever these were my go-tos. I just use them for a couple years. It's a Graph Gear 500, it's 0.7 size. I really like these, they have like a nice weight to them. In all honesty, I don't think it matters that much. It's not that much different from a pencil like this. Um, I can tell you one thing, it's the lead inside the pencil that you're using that really makes a difference. So if you're using a really hard lead, you're not gonna get a lot of line variety, you're not gonna get a lot of dark shadows from your pencil. Um, so make sure you're buying like a 2B pencil lead um, and you're gonna have a lot easier time getting different values and having a lot more fun when you're drawing. So you don't really have to spend the money on an expensive mechanical pencil. I don't think these were very expensive, um, but do invest in some good lead. All right, next up is Muji pens. So I love these. They are made in Japan. They have a lot of different sizes, a lot of different colors, um, and they're great. The ink flow is really great. Um, they're fun for any type of drawing really. They're great for over any medium, like a marker or something like that. And they're great just for writing as well. So if you're somebody that likes to write in your sketchbook a lot, these are a great option. Unfortunately, mine are all dead, which is sad. Um, and I'm not able to get any more right now. I probably could buy some more online, I just haven't. But I used to have like a red, a black, a blue, you know, stuff like that. And I would carry them out everywhere. And I had a lot of fun using these. So I would definitely recommend getting some of these. Now this next one is not a necessity, but if you're somebody that likes really fine detail work, whether it's like super hyper realistic pencil drawings or you just like really clean sketches, I would definitely recommend getting this eraser. It's called a Tombow Mono Zero. And basically it's like a mechanical pencil, but it's an eraser like that. Um, and basically, you know, people are used to using erasers that are thicker, fatter, something like that. Um, and it's really hard to get those really small mistakes that you want to get out or like make those white highlights pop a lot. So this is a great option for those of you that really want to get those fine details, have a lot more control over your pencil drawings. So I would definitely recommend this. I haven't been using it a lot lately just because I typically don't erase very much anymore, especially like if I'm using colored pencils, but I used this for years and it was literally maybe my second or third favorite art supply for the longest time. If you just need a big eraser, I would just recommend getting a big kneaded eraser. They're great, you can manipulate the size of it, and also you just have to stretch it out and pull it apart, and it cleans itself basically, so it lasts a really long time. Unless you're doing some like heavy duty drawing, this will last you forever. And then last but not least, I will talk about my sketchbook. So I use this sketchbook right here. It is a Stillman and Burn Zeta series sketchbook. Um, mine is in the 8x10 size and it's the mixed media paper. Basically this paper is really thick um, but it has a, like just a little bit of tooth to it so it's not perfectly smooth. So it's great for pencil drawings, colored pencil, marker. Um, I've used acrylic in here, I've used gouache, um, charcoal, I've glued a bunch of stuff in here. I don't know, it really takes a lot and you can see like there's no warping, like the pages are fine and it really takes a beating. I would say these markers, the char pack markers bleed like crazy and they did manage to bleed through a little bit of this sketchbook, but compared to my Moleskine sketchbook where these markers would bleed through three pages, these barely bled through one. So it is a really great sketchbook. This is the first time I'm using it and I'm really loving it. Uh, I'm used to working in a smaller sketchbook, so it's a lot of fun to go a little bit bigger. Um, so if you're looking for a new sketchbook, I would definitely recommend this one, especially in the soft cover size because it really does lay perfectly flat, which is nice. It is really nice. I love it. <laughs> and I feel like maybe I should show you guys this too, but um, I keep all of my art supplies in this pencil case right here. Um, it's crazy that all that fits in here actually, but it does. 
I've been using this pencil case for a couple years now and it's a really solid pencil case. I would recommend it. It's called the Smart Fit pencil case. I think I got it off Jet Pens. Um, and it's great, it holds all my supplies. It hasn't gotten that dirty, which is surprising because it's yellow. Um, but I think there's a blue color and maybe one other as well, maybe a gray. But it has two big pockets where I can keep all my supplies. And it's small, which is great. So yeah, that is actually it. Those are all of the supplies that I typically have in my pencil case. So yeah, some of these supplies I've been using for years. Some of them are recent additions to my kind of like go-to collection, but they're all great. I would definitely recommend giving them a try and try and push yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit. I think one of the most important messages of this video was, you know, as a younger artist, I told myself I would never use, you know, a chisel nib and I would never use a water-based marker. And now I'm using water-based markers and chisel nibs more than I'm using the brush tip alcohol markers that I used always when I was a kid and which were also double the price, you know what I mean? So don't knock it until you try it, I guess is the best way to look at things. And give me your suggestions. I feel like everybody has a couple art supplies that nobody really knows about that they really love. So if I missed anything in this video and you guys wanna tell me what art supplies you love and what I should try, let me know in the comments and I will test some out because why not? I have nothing else to do, so. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you guys try some of this stuff yourself. Um, let me know if you have any questions, I guess. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. I have like a lot of time now so I can make more videos. All right, this is great. Goodbye.